So you're learning some Chopin. Most of it's pretty manageable. Until you reach that part. Okay, so now how do we get from that to this? I'm gonna now show you exactly how I would learn and practice a section like this. I have three examples that I'll go through and I'll be focusing on my main tool, which is to create original exercises and drills that specifically target what I need to work on for each passage. The following is my formula for accelerating my learning process. I first analyze and break apart the material, then I isolate and extract the parts that are the most difficult for me. I then reconstruct them into personalized exercises that help me master a particular technique or problem area. Everything I'm going to talk about in this video is in line with practice techniques that I cover often on this channel. So if this material is of use to you, please remember to subscribe to stay up to date with my latest videos. All right, so let's start from the beginning. The first thing that I'm doing is making sense of the pitches. I know it kind of throws you off just to see that group of 48 there, but trust me, that's not going to be an issue once you have all of these notes organized. The first thing I notice is that the second half of measure 51 is all one scale. It's a G flat major scale, or you can look at it as D flat mixolydian. And now on measure 52, as I'm playing through these notes, I'm beginning to hear a pattern. And I'm also beginning to see a pattern on the page because of these top notes, they stick out. And when this pattern breaks, I'll section it off. This is also a scale again, up until this high F. And I notice things that are exactly the same from register to register. And now we have our four sections. By the way, I feel compelled to remind you not to skip these steps. Analyzing the material at least one time through will help you learn this passage so much faster than just reading through the notes. This is the area that needs the most work. I am going to just isolate, in this case, exactly what I need to play for measure 52 up until that middle point there. I'm choosing one, three, two, five all the way down. So the question is, do I sit there and mathematically figure out the relationship between the amount of notes in the right hand versus the left hand? The answer is no. I think the main factor or the main trick here is to remember the tempo, the pace of each line. And I'm going to challenge myself to repeat this in different keys, probably just going up by semitone. Practicing in this way is very active and engaging because you're creating something new and original. And you're also interacting with Chopin's brain almost. You're trying to figure out how did he arrange these notes to create this pattern or this passage. From there, you're challenging yourself to play this in different forms, different keys. So you're able to increase your overall technique. You're able to learn this passage faster because you're very focused. Also, I find that it helps you memorize this passage and remember it for longer. So it just increases your overall confidence in playing this passage. Before we go on to the next example, here's a summary of what I did with this section. I first looked for patterns and characteristics of notes within the phrase to divide it up into clear sections. This helps me organize how I practice it and also how I remember the notes. Then I identified the problem area for me, which was this pattern here with the fixed note on top and the descending curl of notes. I isolated and extracted this area and practiced it in different transpositions so that I solidify my grasp of this pattern. Now on to example number two. So this piece involves this pattern or some form of it that carries through the whole piece. So when you're practicing it and as you are progressing with the piece, you really have to focus on conditioning yourself to be able to sustain that pattern with ease. So I'm deciding to isolate this part of the pattern. Now what I did for the exercise is apply that same exact pattern to different chords. 
By the way, some of you may recognize this from my set of modified Chopin exercises. I have 12 of them. They're coming from Chopin's Opus 10 Etude set, and they're all very similar. They focus on this very technique and they allow you to apply different harmonies to them. So I'm starting first with a D major chord. And I'm going to make it slightly more interesting by changing up the left hand. Instead of playing these chords, I'm going to play this sort of fancy version, fancy version of a C major 7th chord. I'm also adding that little G major turnaround here so that I have something that serves as a transition for when I repeat it on the next chord. And that is it. I'm going to repeat this now through the circle of fifths. Then I'm able to strengthen my ability to play this etude itself. Now on to example number three. This last example comes from his Grand Polonaise, but you actually find this type of technique or something very similar to it in many of his other pieces. Okay, so let's work on that. What is it? If you look at what fingers two and one are doing, it's just going down the E flat major scale. And then we have this figure on top. The chords I want to use are these to start off with. Over this chord, I want to play these notes, which is part of the Lydian mode. On the bottom, and when I apply that formula of the grace note going into the major or minor third, I come up with this pattern. So again, with this, I'm going to transpose it to other chords, and I'm just going to go down chromatic steps. So if you're learning Chopin, or any other repertoire for that matter, try out this technique. Apply these methods to the passage you're working on, or maybe you're learning these exact passages. Learn exactly what I was doing, and see how your practicing and your playing changes and how fast you're progressing. Trust me, at the very least, you'll gain more insights about the passage and that'll carry you far. So try it, let me know. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to my patrons on Patreon for your continued support and I'll see you in the next video.